What do you want to do? I don't know. We don't have an intro. Welcome, everybody, to the Glacier Gamble. This is episode 36, and this is our entertainment section for you. I am a little under the weather, so I will do my best to bring you the heat as best as I can. Uh, if it did come out on time, awesome. If it did come out late, that is why. But yeah, today we got some good stuff for you today. We got some Marvel information, like we always do, Werewolf by Night, Charlie Cox, some more Multiverse of Madness news, uh, Thor Love and Thunder, and some Craven. And then we have miscellaneous news with some PBS kids, other cartoons, League of Legends, and uh, Warner Brothers. So, you know, all the all the stuff that you came here to hear about, I'm sure a lot of you were clicking on this like, oh, PBS kids, thank God. So, yeah, we'll get there. If you want to see that, that'll be near the end. First stuff we're going to cover, though, is Marvel. First is uh, one thing that Joe added to the our uh, little note section here. I was going to, and I decided not to. And then when Joe added it, I was like, all right, yeah, let, let, let's talk about it. Netflix is is all the Netflix Marvel shows are being added to Disney Plus. Disney Plus Canada. They're taking off of their all, le- the, all of them are leaving Netflix. So yeah. Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, Punisher, and Defenders. There, there's no Iron Fist. That's not there. <laughs> right. Just like there's no Avatar, <laughs> the last airbender uh, live action movie. Yeah. Or Dragon Ball Z movie. Yeah. Those don't exist. No, they're all being taken off of Netflix on March 1st, and they are being added to Disney Plus Canada on March 16th. No news on when when they're going to be added to the U.S. or how they're going to be added to U.S. A lot of people are campaigning for uh, Kristen Ritter. Like, it, it first it was Save Daredevil, now it's Save Jessica Jones. So Yeah, I thought she was um, perfect. Yeah, Kristen Ritter's perfect. John Bernthal's perfect. Um, it's really the other two you got to think about. Luke Marvel Cage and Iron Fist. Yeah, I mean, Luke Cage wasn't bad, um, but... It also, it also, Luke Cage is right. Uh, Mahershala Ali is in Luke Cage. So, like, how do you explain that same Luke Cage? Like, meaning Cotton. Right, Mouth, like, the acting, Luke, the actor who played Luke Cage was fine. Yeah. It's just, yeah, there's some logistics to figure out yeah. there. Well, uh, I mean, Chris and Ritter, John Bernthal, hopefully we see them in a project going forward. Agreed. I think the big thing from that is that's rated R. Which Punisher? One? Isn't Punisher? Oh, yeah, rated? TV is TV mature. Yeah, definitely. It's um, very gory. Right. Uh, but you imagine the hand to hand combat, um, killing, bullets, uh, murder. Like, you know, it's very brutal. But I mean, that's how Punisher should be. Like, he's not going to shoot someone and there not be blood. I mean, I think that uh, it opens the door for the potential of future Disney being okay with R products on yeah. there mature products on on disney plus which i think is a huge huge win because that means with so that came out i and like like i say disney doesn't do anything on accident like this is just the way marketing and everything works now deadpool ryan reynolds said that deadpool 3 deadpool. is in production yeah deadpool news deadpool 3 news is coming sooner rather than later i think that syncing up with mature stuff coming on to disney plus like those right. things coming out at the same time, I think that's on purpose. Like letting people know, like we're fine with Punisher and stuff coming on. We're gonna be okay with Daredevil or with Deadpool being rated R. And I, I think that's just that's that is the one positive. Like I didn't think this was that big of news. Like yeah, eventually I figured the Netflix stuff would probably come over to either right. Hulu or Disney Plus. Right, and and Disney did add all the Fox stuff, and it's lit. It's labeled as Disney Legacy content. I'm sure you could say the same thing. You could put in that Legacy. Content content i think yeah i think the biggest takeaway is that mature content on disney plus is a huge win the other thing that you added was that michael giacchino will compose for werewolf by night yeah i really don't know anything about him we don't know that much about werewolf by night but you know it's apparently it's a halloween special set for this year yeah i just figured that was a little little tidbit of information so. Uh, I do. I like scores, sound, soundtrack, that sort of thing. So I do tend to recognize some, like some of the bigger ones. Um, what I know him from, I believe he was Up. I believe he did yeah. the soundtrack for the Pixar movie Up. And then I believe he also did for Star Trek. And there okay. might have been another, like another big one that he did. But those are the two that I believe sure. he did that. Um, and then I'm pretty sure he won an Oscar for one of those two. Sure. Anyway, like I, I recognized his name and I'm pretty sure he was the main guy in Up. 
And that was sure. like, that, and I'm sure that's what he won the Oscar for. Yeah. So I, I think obviously he's not necessarily going to be the same tone, but he's done big movies. He's worked with Disney before. And he, I think the perfect example with you, if you want to relate Werewolf by Night with Up, which is a very weird connection, but we, <laughs> we're going to make that here today. If you think about Up, the when the balloons rise out of the house yep. and you hear like the piano keys and like the, the xylophone almost like the sure. trinkles. I think that like it almost makes you feel like each one of those balloons is making that noise. And I think he, so I think if he helped compose that part, that's just a perfect example of taking the score and making the audience feel what's being shown. Werewolf yeah. by Night, you said it's supposed to be a Halloween special, which means probably going to be supposed to be terrifying. Yeah, which and means... I, I mean, they want to tie it into possibly this supernatural mature world. I mean, like Midnight Suns that they're talking oh, about. Yeah, Moon Knight, Werewolf yeah. by Night, yeah. So I would assume night, there's going night. there's gonna be a point where this that he works on making the score dark yeah. and scary like uh, I, yeah yeah not so it's not gonna feel like up but he's gonna make you feel what he wants you to feel with the score and I think so sure. I, no, I didn't I uh, when I saw that you wrote that down I was like oh that that should be a good hire Disney doesn't really make bad hires so it's really like the people that they don't hire that's frustrating <laughs> next thing. Is actually incredibly, incredibly sad. Uh, both you and I had the same reaction. I didn't tweet about it, but you did. I think I responded to yours, but uh, Charlie Cox. Charlie Cox is Daredevil. For those, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen No Way Home yet, if you haven't, you do. Charlie Cox's Daredevil does show up for a moment as Matt Murdock. Murdock, not as Daredevil. He went with his wife to a showing of that. And uh, she started recording his face to get his live reaction for when he shows up in the movie. And so they can get the audience's reaction for when he shows up. Apparently when they went to that movie, he showed up on screen, not a peep. He said it was dead silent crickets uh, and that nobody cared. Uh, I'm not sure about anybody that's watching this or this podcast that watches us regularly, um, how you went felt when you went saw that movie. But when we went, uh, you and I both reacted. Both you and I basically were like, I had a smile from ear to ear. I and I like, said out loud, I was like, awesome. Yeah. I'm sure Mike, if he's watching, he heard me. He was next to me. He probably heard me like, yeah. I said awesome out yeah. loud. That was so cool. I, I leaned back in my chair. Yeah. I was I was, I was, was so excited. I'll be a people in the audience that like, he yelled it. He's like, awesome. Yeah. We, there was somebody yeah. behind us that went yeah. awesome. Uh, yeah. There was somebody up front that clapped once. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, I mean they, yeah, it was it was like a lot of it's like people were talking. It's like uh, right. Like were like, it wasn't when like when uh, Andrew showed up. Yeah, and like that you couldn't hear what was happening. Yeah. Like they purposely didn't have dialogue right away because they knew the audience would freak out. Yeah, it wasn't that loud because he wasn't Daredevil. If he showed up in his Daredevil costume, they would have. Yeah. But he showed up as Matt Murdock, and people reacted. Like it wasn't dead silent. It makes yeah. me wonder: Did he go at a later showing? To where people had already seen yeah, the movie. Did he recently go or did he go like opening week? Right. Did he go uh, opening week and the story just didn't come out till now? Or did he just go? Because if he just went, a lot of these people have probably seen it already. Uh, a lot of people that have seen or haven't seen it know that you're in it already. Like if you're looking for that reaction, you got to go when people don't know. However, uh, if, he, if he did go right away and now this is just coming out, that's super sad because yeah. we reacted. He just went on a bad showing because that was huge it was important to us and and it's it's hard because like it is it is from like people who don't have netflix or or haven't seen daredevil on netflix or don't read or the don't, comics don't, don't know, know who matt daredevil. murdoch is that's, yeah that's not like there's a lot of it's not mcu that netflix stuff so like people weren't going to watch it to know who you are unless the people who already know who you are uh, but no, uh, there's a lot of support for him. Everyone's quote tweeting that thing, adding him and being like, dude, like we, we love it. Like we loved it. Our, our audience loved it. Like yeah. we were, yeah. we were excited for him. Oh, I if he wants to come on and talk about it, if he wants to come on and talk about it. We'll, we'll at, we'll at Charlie Cox and we can find him. <laughs> it was, it was an amazing experience just right off the bat. Cause we were talking about like, God, I want, Char I want Daredevil to be there. Like we want a right. lawyer, so. And he did a good job of hiding it because there was a, definitely a point where I was like, he might not be in it. Yeah, there yeah. was definitely a point where I was. There was never a point where I didn't think Andrew was in it. Like I thought, oh, sure. maybe to maybe Andrew's in it. I don't know about Toby, but I, for, I I was like, I for sure think Andrew. And I was like, 
And at some point, I was like, yeah, maybe Charlie Cox is right. He's, he might not be in it. He's, he's pretty adamant about not being in it. Sure. I also trust people when they say I promise. Uh, uh, well, Ryan Reynolds just promised, so. Right, exactly. And now I don't trust people because Charlie, uh, Charlie Cox and Andrew Garfield promised and they were in it. So now I assume any time a Marvel actor says, I promise, they're trying to give me an old re-raisin cookie and telling me it's chocolate chip. But yeah, if Charlie Cox wants to come on here, we will let him know how much we enjoy him and oh, ask yeah. him plenty of questions. We have some rumors to cover. We want, we have mentioned Multiverse of Madness. It's still around the corner. It's going to be huge. There's going to be multi, Multiverse of Madness news probably until Multiverse of Madness comes out. So right. just much Which, like Spider-Man news until Spider-Man came out. And part of that is because like, like we've mentioned every time we talk about Multiverse of Madness, they're going to tell you 400 people, a bunch of different actors, all playing a bunch of different characters. They're going to tell you every person that's in this movie so that... But they're also going to tell you a bunch of people that aren't in this movie so that they you don't know which ones are real and which ones aren't. So they're going to tell you that the guys from the 70s, the movies, the movies from the 70s are in it. Lou Ferrigno is going to be in there. That Lou Ferrigno is going to be in there. Then, they, then they're also going to tell you Eric Bana's in there, but maybe only one of those two. Like that sort of thing, for example. Some of the news that we heard, the first thing, I'm going to skip the first one and then go to that next. Uh, the first thing is apparently, because this just came out, a multiversal version of Wolverine is supposed to appear. I take that as not Hugh Jackman. Let me just say something. There is a certain actor that you are very fond of that has been linked to this role that is looking huge right now. Um, Which one? Because there's three, there's three actors that I uh, thought could play this role. He's a singer. Uh, Mr. Edgerton? Yeah, Taron. He's looking yeah. big right oh, now. Well, he's like he's ripped. Huge, like He's like always huge. been ripped, dude. He's ripped. Yeah. No, he's looking like big, big, but big, big. Big, big. And he's like 5'9". So. Uh, he, yeah, he might even be shorter than that. He's definitely yeah. not Hugh Jackman tall. He's but, more of the traditional. He's not 5'2 Wolverine tall, but he's the shorter Wolverine. Like that. They said they wanted a younger, shorter Wolverine for this MCU's Wolverine. I've said I'm it from the beginning. Taren. I'm all for Taron. Uh, let's see. Taron Edgerton. Shia. Uh, I, yeah, I Daniel don't think they'll Rad. do Shia after the whole. Yeah, they're not going to do Shia. But like issues. he did look good in the thing. Um, if they're not going to hire Johnny Depp for Pirates of the Caribbean, they're not hiring Shia yeah. LaBeouf. Um, Zach Efron. Daniel um, Radcliffe. Yeah. Daniel Radcliffe. I don't uh, think Daniel cool. Radcliffe's going to do it. Scott Eastwood. Scott. Yeah, Scott Eastwood's Eastwood. been attached to it. Yeah. Taron well, Egerton is my like Egerton. absolute top choice. He is he he'd be perfect for it. And I'm obsessed. I I be, I believe I own every movie he's been in, including the bad ones. Uh, I I'm just I huge 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 fan. Yeah, if that's if that's the case, if it's He's looking Taron. big big. So Insane. my my first thought so a multiversal they have a couple like voice actor from the animated shows coming in and they're revamping that 97 uh, X-Men show. My yeah. first thought was that it's going to be the new voice of Wolverine in the animated version. If they are doing animated voiced ones. Sure. Um, so my first thought was actually, oh, it's the new X-Men 97 Wolverine. Sure. That was my first thought. Uh, my second thought was that it was going to be a fan casted. Wolverine, and then my third thought was the new future one. Apparently, what I've seen about I've seen this the alternate version Wolverine, and that that could mean our Wolverine. And you don't know, like it, it's an alternate version of the Wolverine we're used to, which is Hugh Jackman. He's apparently going to be in his yellow costume. That's he's what I want. Wearing it. That's I, I want it. the our X Men from the MCU to be in the yellow. They I want. Teased it. I mean, they teased it in one of the Wolverine ones. See, and like, in Deadpool, the they were like leaning more towards it. They got closer. Like Deadpool two. It would get out more yellow. I am. I want them to go to that traditional blue and yellow. It yeah. looks good. And like, not every movie can, or not every show, every movie can be Punisher. It can be that new dark movie. It can't be the Batman. Right. Like some comic book movies and shows just have to be comic books. Yeah. Why do you think Into the Spider-Verse is so popular? It's the art. People don't want everything to be adult. They want it. Good mix. That's sure. why adults watch Disney make, movies. You may have to make alterations to make it more like no one's going to wear neon. No, Scarlet Witch isn't going to wear her, her what she wore on Halloween in the Halloween episode. She's not going to wear the pink and red. Like, that's not going to be her MCU accurate thing. But, but they that made bright the variation. Red, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They made the variation, and now her Scarlet Witch thing looks 
horrifying. The way they did with Vision. Like, Vision looks similar to what he did in the comics, but more modern and cool, but still bright. But for every one of these bright heroes that you use, you can have a Moon Knight that isn't bright white. He tans down because he's supposed to look a little dirty and he's just brutal as all hell. Yeah. You can have a mixture of both. It's fine. And then when they mix, it'll be more fun. I I think that multiversal, that Wolverine, either is going to be animated or the next wolverine he doesn't have to say anything he used to be like like hey there bub like that's all he's got to do yep like, that's all you need it'll be it'll be cool it'll be fun to see which one there's two more uh multiverse more of madness multiverse of Ma- i got one more too so, so we got three more total uh potential castings for multiverse of madness the first one so we talked about clea she is the daughter of dormammu or uh, Mephisto is it niece, niece of Dormammu. Ne- yeah. Thank you. I couldn't remember if it was Daughter Mephisto or Dormammu. Umar. Yeah, so niece of Dormammu and love interest of Doctor Strange. So she would be replaced because Rachel McAdams was shown in the trailer. She'll be in this movie, but Clea is like the love interest of yeah. Doctor Strange. Yeah. You know, she's the niece of Dormammu. She's from the Dark Dimension. Dimensional travel. Um, so yeah, Dark Dimension is where she's been. Like that's her forte. Um, yeah. And the rumor is that Clea is going to be played by Emma Watson. So, first thing is, I don't think this is true. Emma Watson said she is retired from acting like a year or two ago, maybe yeah, more. This is a this is a ten plus year role. This is so. a yeah. This is a role like unless she plans to come back out of retirement to remove herself from. Uh, maybe she like did that whole Harry Potter revamp. And was like, oh, I miss this world. Yeah. I'm sick of politics. Let's. I miss this. Like, maybe she decided, I want to remove Hermione from my past. I took my break. I'm going to come back. I'm going to be remembered as a Marvel actor now. Sure. Like, maybe that's the case. But if she really retired from acting, that means this is, there's no way this is true. But I do think Clea is going to show up either now or whenever they introduce the Midnight Suns and Elsa Bloodstone. Like, whenever they truly dive into them, um, whether that's this movie or the next, uh, that's when they they will bring Clea in at some point. Right. But to introduce a bunch of new characters, including major characters like Clea, I don't want, I think that might end up taking away from the movie. So I really, I I don't really want them to bring Clea in this time. This is going to be just a, just a lot of possibilities are going to open up. Um, and I mean that in regards to the the Fantastic Four, the X Men, you know Billy and Tommy, what America Chavez can do, um, America Chavez in general, Illuminati, the Illuminati. Like, uh, there's gonna be so much that I don't want them to completely distract from Doctor Strange with all of these new new cameos. It still needs to feel like a Doctor Strange movie. Yeah, but but because Doctor Strange is the one that's cracking open the multiverse you're gonna have all this mm-hmm. like it's gonna it's gonna happen but at the end but at the end i want one i want a big reveal um because i i don't want them to be like oh by the way all these mutants exist uh the fantastic four exists yeah i don't want them to say all of these things exist i would just want all of these things to be part of the story and then at the end for it to be like oh by the way all this shit exists now then it's like oh like now dr strange either has to deal with that or it's like now we got our doctor we got a doctor strange story and now we can continue on with the next part of whatever this is so agreed agree 100 percent. and i don't think clea needs to be in that she doesn't not this time not that she doesn't need to be here this time um but dark, yeah if you're getting in dark dimension you're talking like ghost rider stuff too so like I, 100 yeah it's just so, it's too yeah, much midnight suns ghost rider you can bring i thought clea. endgame was too much yeah. I thought Endgame had too much. I, and this is going to be bigger than that. Yeah, at some point, it's that too many cooks in the kitchen, throwing too much salt on the salad, like whatever whatever cliche phrase you want to use. It's at some point, you're way overdoing it. You're way over seasoning. The, the next will have one, her time. She'll have her time. The, the next one, I when I added this, you texted me saying that she has the eyes for it. Yeah. Uh, Ava Green, I'm a fan. I think she's tremendously talented apparently is going to come in as nightmare uh which that would be a gender swap i believe yes i believe nightmare is supposed yep. to be male in the comics but like i said i've mentioned this i think two previous times disney is going to gender swap to female at any time where it can be done and i think she could do it i think yeah kill one it. thing i don't want there to be is she would have the possibility of looking very similar to Hela. Oh, a hundred percent. 
A hundred percent. So I, you got to do it different than that. Um, right. Especially with the the eye makeup. Like yeah. the, if you want nightmare, you got to have that eye makeup. Yeah, but if you give us like black and greenish. Kinda, yeah. Like, so you, or you'd yeah. have to make her like CGI, like technology. You'd have to yeah. adjust her to where Ava green becomes a slightly less recognizable. And then yeah. it's like, why do you, why, why pick such a big actor to play a uh, technologically Sure. Enhanced role. Yeah. I'm not sure. Again, this one, um, I will 100%, 100% forthright. This was a source that I found deep into research. Like, it was one of those, it was the only source I could find on that information. Sure. Nowhere else I could see was talking about it. Not sure if that's what they would do, but um, I did see from multiple sources that they were thinking of gender swapping nightmare, but this was the only one that connected it to a- Ava Green. That's okay. I, th- I think I think Nightmare would be a more logical villain right now if he is truly he or she is truly behind it all. Because once again, I think Mephisto, Dark Dimension, like like um, well, and some of these Ghost villains, Rider, like could totally be genderless. A co- yeah. Some of these villains could t- you could totally do a genderless Nightmare. Yeah, one hundred percent. They Disney's uh, a huge thing. We talked about it last week. A lot of the villains that they're pursuing are faceless energy masses, like yeah. Raya. They could they could easily do just like a not doesn't have to be faceless energy mass, but they could definitely do a non-human, so they don't have to have a labeled gender yeah. as Nightmare easily. Sure. Uh, and then there's one other one you said you had. Yeah. So uh, Sir Patrick Stewart was doing an interview. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, and they asked him, uh, "So is that your is that your voice in the Doctor Strange trailer?" And he like looks off camera and he's like, "Who's Doctor Strange?" And Kevin so, Feige. Yeah. <laughs> looks off camera. Who's Doctor Strange? Oh, um, people have been imitating my voice for decades. Yeah. Okay. He's on the side. Okay. He's- okay. Yeah. No, they're they're. It's one hundred percent. Come on, nobody has that beautiful of a shining head. Nobody else yeah. does. Th- that ear, you can see it from the ear. Oh yeah, that ear, the voice. That was Patrick Stewart's ear. Just wanted to bite that thing. Yeah, awesome. I think it's Patrick Stewart. I definitely saw that as well. Um, he's just. It's the it's the whole meme of uh, what Marvel actors are told. Yeah, lie about it. If it can, worst comes to worst, promise you're not in it. Well, we have some other Marvel castings that are potential. Aaron Pierre has been cast in Blade. So it is not a confirmed what his role will be. But yeah, I don't really know much else beside of him, but it was the it was the Mufasa thing that I rem- I recognized his name. Back in the day, we said something about Aaron Pierre. We did. We did. Yeah. Yep. We mentioned it. We talked about him being Mufasa. I think he was somebody that I said could be in. Uh, we talked about him for Black Panther. Oh, right, right. Speaking of vampires, though, Jared Leto came out and said oh, that yep. Morbius is 100% CGI. Yeah, speaking of and enhancing actors with technology as well. Yeah, yeah. So 100% CGI. He said he wanted to, he didn't want to use prosthetics or whatever. Uh, he, wa- he wanted to use as much technology as possible to enhance the character. I mean, that's that's very Jared Leto. It's it's yeah. just he want he does he there is not a single thing I can ever think of Jared Leto where I'm like. He didn't put in 200% there. He's, if anything, he overdoes it. Yeah. Like when he does a bad job, it's because he did too much. I don't think he, which I would much rather have that. Like, I would much rather people say, you kind of overdo it. Yeah. Like, oh, you know, you kind of overdo trying to do humor. And it's not, it it ends up being not funny sometimes. Well, I'd rather try too many times than never be entertaining at all. Like, I'd rather work too hard and make a mistake than not get anything done. Sure. Sure. And that's just, that's when I, I read that too about the technology. Uh, that's 100% Jared Leto, which that, that, I think that was the issue with the Joker as well. I think he oh, just. Yeah, his dove take in. you wanted to do. I don't think it's like. It it's wasn't bad. Because you're comparing it to Heath Ledger, right? Like you're comparing mm-hmm. it to Heath Ledger. Everyone's comparing it to Heath Ledger. Just like everyone's comparing Batfleck or Battinson to Christian Bale. Um, I mean, I've said it a million times. If someone's devoting. Devoting their career to portray a character you love, accept them for that, um, and try to try to take everything you love about it because they're doing this for you. Well, and it's it's uh, acting is so interesting to judge certain actors against another actor. 
because look at every Joker throughout time. They are all different from the Arkham video games and the yeah. animated show to Cesar Romero, Jack Nicholson, Heath Ledger, Jared. They're all so different. You wouldn't yeah. think they're always the same character. It, to me, it's, it's like taking, say, Starry Night by Van Gogh, having somebody do Starry Night by Van Gogh, but doing a color inversion and then doing it in Copic markers instead of paint. And then taking that Copic marker and splattering watercolor on it, like, and then yeah. saying that, you know, it's just not as good. They're comp they're not the same anymore. They're no longer the same. Right. Yeah. So to the to judge Jared Leto's Joker, I think the way people judge it is just wrong. Anyway, Jared Leto's Morbius couldn't be more excited. Um, the I like prosthetics. I think it really adds to the character. Same with like if you can do CGI, go for it. But if there's a time where you can do a model or an, a prosthetic, something that can add to it, maybe even just like enhance it a little bit, try to do it. Even if it's a little harder, costs a little bit more, it'll be worth it in the end. Uh, Craven, we talked about Chameleon and how there was the original Chameleon casting and how he wasn't able to do it, whether or not they'd wait and get the guy they want or if they're gonna cast. Sounds like they have hired Henry Heckinger, Heckinger, Hetchinger, Hecken, Hetchinger. You wrote uh, Fred, not Henry. Uh, dude, I in my mind. What is wrong with me? It is Fred. Fred Hetchinger, Heckinger, Hendinger, Gegender. Sure. It sounds as though he was cast as Chameleon. Sure. So it sounds like so Chameleon is gonna play a huge role Craven's in the story. Craven's right. brother. Gonna play a huge role. Could not wait until they got the original person they wanted. That means Chameleon's gonna be a huge role. That's that's really all it says. Is it doesn't say that this was their second choice. It doesn't say anything like that. This just says that Chameleon is such a big role that they couldn't take the original casting and they couldn't wait on it and that they had to get the casting now. Right, so, right. I'm, I mean, I believe that. If Craven's the number one, I his brother would probably be the number two in his story. And then Russell Crowe probably is just an addition you got. But yeah, I don't think that was huge news. It was just kind of obvious. But we yeah. I just want to explain to people that that means Chameleon is going to be the main second character, yeah. secondary yeah. character. So now let's get into that Thor love and thunder. First thing, Valkyrie will officially be known as King Valkyrie. That's what Thor deemed her. And that's what she's supposed to be. But and she other... said at, at Comic-Con she needs to find her queen. So yeah, she, exactly. Yep. It all makes sense, which will probably be Jane Foster. Yeah. Hopefully not. What? 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 I'd rather it be like Captain Marvel or something. I don't know. Be like Monica a, Rambo. Yeah. Something like that. Not Jane Foster. Anyway. <laughs> next. <laughs> next is that all black, the necro sword will appear in Thor yeah. love and thunder. Yeah. I which you get this from a Lego set. I believe like you got you get some of the news from a lego set the lego sets that came out is they got uh they got like gore the god butcher lego set and he's it's definitely all black the necro sword which we have mentioned all black the necro sword multiple times on previous episodes yeah uh we've talked about it when discussing sony products we've talked about it when discussing marvel products we've talked about it when discussing the comic books all black the necro sword would be an introduction of the symbiotes into the mcu yeah following the symbiote venom that was left at the end of spider-man no way home this does, this does make sense because all black the necro sword was created was the first symbiote created by null null is the god of the sim symbiotes so it's hard to I go back to I saying said, symbiote that was so funny when that came out <laughs> that trailer came out everyone's like what did she just say the symbiotes the symbiotes it's like no that's not how you say it maybe gore is gonna go to clintar and you know kill no i don't know see and from everything that i've heard is that the clintar is just a myth <laughs> I mean, I've never been able to find it, it. Yeah, finding it is the tough part. You know, yeah. Marvel still has yet to find the Clintar. So yeah, I don't. I have yet to see it. Um, but yeah, it'll be nice to see it appear. You know, get stimulated. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think all black the necro sword showing up because. Um, so what's the well, name okay, of so like what here, is hear his me blade? Out. Hear me out here. It's okay. out in space, right? Yes. So like, um, like a galaxy. So, like, if you just abbreviate galaxy as, like, G, 
and you're trying to find where it's located out in the galaxy or like the spot it's located. Sure. You the G spot. Was, the G spot is of where the Klintar. It, of the Klintar. <laughs> Well, so what is what is a Dane Whitman's sword? What is that one? What's... That is just the ebony blade. That's ebony blade. Yeah, but they are those connected? I don't think so. Okay. It looks it looked symbiotic though. Whose is the so what kills? Uh, which nowhere? Nowhere. All That's black all black. The necro sword. sword. Yeah. Okay. So all right, I had to make that. I had to re. Yeah, the ebony the, blade. My is brain like a, is functioning on this right family now. Family curse. Like it goes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, well, Venom's kind of a cur, but anyway, having the symbiotes come into the MCU is the big thing. So this was supposed to appear in Love and Thunder. So would that mean that the symbiotes are going to be pushed forward in like the next trilogy of Thor with Jane Foster or Valkyrie? I uh, see. I don't know. Or would that know, be just introducing the symbiotes to put them in like Secret Invasion? Because, like the Venom symbiote is now in the mcu right with all black the necrosaur that means symbiotes existed in the mcu it all ties back to when toby mcguire fought venom because that the hive mind remembered peter parker and that's how venom got transferred to our world it was the it, piece that know. still remembered yeah so because the hive mind remembers or captures all that knowledge so throughout all these universes there's an episode of our podcast where we mention all the different things that venom like venom has taken over every member of the guardians venom has taken yeah. over in the comic books venom has basically taken over everything which means bringing the symbiotes in through thor love and thunder probably means we're gonna focus on the symbiote planet first would be my like maybe yeah clintar maybe you're gonna eat clintar because null is actually in prison for a long time imprisoned for a long time right so maybe maybe they'll go through with the variations of the symbiotes which is what i want like a whole symbiote world to develop yeah um or maybe they'll just bring in null through i, I keep thinking of secret invasion because i feel like there is a scroll like a famous scroll that's taken over by venom or a symbiote uh, it's not it's not coming to me my brain is not functioning enough but i think this is bigger than people are making out to like it was just a quick article that was written and I, I really think it should be a bigger deal because if if that's what gore is wielding and it's like that that's a big deal that's it's yeah. like that's a huge deal it is yeah so, and, and it means marvel not only has to make connections with sony but it also means you really have to make sure your ends are tied because you can't make the other part of venom remember peter parker because otherwise the whole venom would have stayed like you you right. they're really gonna have to tie their loose yeah, ends and like also really tight. it also affects eternals too yeah exactly yeah. eternals need to figure out probably how to kill erishem right like yeah. yep. in the future how to kill erishem and all black the necro sword can do that it's a lot of stuff that could be coming down the pipeline that we just don't know about and it's gonna be part of potentially Black Panther. Yeah, it's yeah, just cause Bost. Yeah, because Bost might Bost that. Sorry, yeah. Could be in Thor: Love and Thunder, she might get eaten. So yeah, it's it's huge. <laughs> it's a way bigger deal. For those of you that didn't see it, it's it is a huge deal. So make sure to pay attention to that. The fact the one more thing, the fact that Thor: Love and Thunder is coming out shortly after Doctor Strange. And you could see Doctor Strange and possibly a Wanda, a version of Wanda that is very murderous and <laughs> like bloodletting, like bloodletting, like wants to kill people right into Thor Love and Thunder with Gore the God Butcher that's going to be vicious and wanting to kill people. They could have a very dark sequence of movies yeah. coming up here yeah. too. So, Which is why I will say it again and again this is probably chris hemsworth last appearance as thor i would not expect thor to live beyond this movie i yeah. think if they're gonna go through especially if they go through a series of dark movies i wouldn't be surprised Moon to nights see, right before all that like i wouldn't be surprised to see multiple people killed yeah like i wouldn't be surprised to see jane foster killed too sure i the one thing i, I do think i do think thor <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do think Thor definitely has the possibility to die, but I also I also eventually want to see Beta Ray Bill come in, so I don't yeah. know how that's gonna work. Um, Beta Ray Bill could be so cool, could yeah. be. Beta Ray Bill would be awesome, and if if Jane Foster's getting Mjolnir, then someone's got to get Stormbreaker, and Beta Ray Bill with Stormbreaker would be badass. Hundred percent. I'm I'm 
they've teased it twice. It's huge. Ne- Nebula it's huge. at the start of Endgame was fighting Beta Ray Bill's race, like that kind of like the race, his race. Yeah. And then he had the bust on the side of the arena in Sakar. Probably means that it's gonna show up. Maybe in uh, World War Hulk. Maybe. Yeah. That'd be a good time for it. Maybe he kills Hulk. <laughs> Stormbreaker. That's true. He could. Or all black the Necro Sword. Yeah. That would kill Hulk. Yeah. That would kill Hulk. Anyway, that's all we have for Marvel news. Let's jump into our miscellaneous section. We're going to start with our PBS Kids news. For those of you, maybe you grew up in the 90s. Maybe you grew up a little earlier than that. Maybe you were quite earlier than that. Maybe you had kids that grew up in the 90s, something like that. Arthur, very popular show. I watched it all the time. I still know the theme song by heart. It was my like my favorite theme song as a kid. So good. I will spare you all from hearing that. <laughs> It's it's still like the best theme song of any kid's show I watched besides Pokemon. I don't know. Powerpuff Girls is pretty. That was a slam. I, I don't know right that, that Jamaican accent with Arthur just and it, the word it, it was so good. Arthur's it slapped man. <laughs> um, but yeah, Arthur, second longest running animated show for American history, just reached its finale series finale. The final episode, we got to see a, a recap of what each one of the kids does now for a living. We got to see what Arthur looked like now, and that got turned into a meme on the internet. For those of you that did watch the show, uh, Arthur is now a graphic novelist. His sister, DW, is now a traffic cop. Buster, his best friend, is now a teacher at their school. Francine, the like athletic girl, she is now running a sneaker company. Muffy, she was like the wealthy girl. She is now running for mayor. Binky, who starts out as the school bully who ends up becoming their friend, is now a weatherman. George, I believe he was the moose, is now the man the manager of the diner they always ate at. That was like the big group of friends. And they all we all got to see where they ended up. Um, and Arthur, as a graphic novelist, the thing that he writes is Arthur, and he, he like writes his own story, and they say like, oh, let's hear some, let's hear some. And he goes, chapter one, the day I got my first pair of glasses, which was episode one. The, move, the show came full circle. That show was huge for me as a kid, but yeah, it came to an end. It was awesome, and uh, the memes were just as funny. I took part. As I, I got, actually got a decent amount of interaction on our tweet, on my tweet from that, because they, IGN asked, what type of games does this guy play? And I said, well, the show started in 1996, so he definitely played Pokemon, but now he looks like he plays Monster Hunter. <laughs> and then some people responded to me, they're like, you mean he still plays Pokemon? And then the most common one was everybody saying he looks like the average league player. It was, I, thought, I thought it was pretty funny. But yeah, it was pretty good. Um, Arthur is now over. Since we are talking about cartoons, I wanted to ask you. You have one episode from one cartoon that you used to watch. And that's the only cartoon you can watch for the rest of your life. I I know. I already know my answer. What's the episode? Uh, Make Love Not Warcraft. Okay. That was one of my top choices. I don't. I'm not a big South Park fan. But I love that episode. The whole World of Warcraft com- community logged off to watch this this show. Yeah. To watch this episode. Yeah. It's I don't play Warcraft, and when every time I've tried, I just can't get into it. It's yeah. It, that that episode's amazing. I mean, that we is, quote it. We quote it constantly. <laughs> yeah. A chance. <laughs> oh. And then there's there's a couple similar episodes like there's a Family Guy episode where they go into video games I can't remember what it's called but there's there's a, or a American Dad there's a couple American Dad episodes that I considered if I went with like kids like ones I only ones that I watched as a kid or a preteen that that narrowed it down because I still like adult animation shows so that adds in a whole set because like Disenchantment is one of those shows I've been really enjoying Rick and Morty has some decent episodes it's 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 very very hard for me to choose yeah just the one like that's why I wanted to ask you like because I thought of Make Love Not Warcraft too. It's like, but is this the only cartoon episode I'd want to watch? I think it is, man. I, I mean, I got, I can quote so many things from that that it's just, it's. I, I feel like I would end up wanting to watch, like an episode of Pokemon. They, they should do. They should. South Park should do a League of Legends one. They like. They yeah. should do a League of Legends one. World they probably Warcraft have an elite game at the time. Well, so but like the Simpsons did a League of Legends episode. They just didn't go into League of Legends. Yeah. Well, South, I mean, yeah, South, South Park would be, the, they'd be playing as the people, but there'd be one person that would just be ruining the game or something like that. So I think, I don't know. I think that would be fun. That would be fun. 
Okay. So. I think I would end up picking an American Dad episode, if I have to be honest. There's the one that sticks out to me the most is an episode called LGBT Steve, or LGB Steve. The son from that show ends up becoming a roller derby member. All right. And it's one of their musical episodes, and the songs are just just so good. Otherwise, there's the uh, Road 2 episodes in Family Guy. All, all the road twos, I feel like I could, I would consider those as well. Yeah, I think I think that's what I'd end up going with. Next couple things, let's go back into superhero world. Warner Brothers apparently asked Matt Reeves while making the Batman to change a scene. Matt Reeves responded, uh, "No thanks, I like it." <laughs> and then <laughs> I thought he just left it. He, he, he left the scene. Um, I think that's awesome because Warner Brothers doesn't make great decisions. So doing things his way is probably going to result in more success. However, Zack Snyder did that. <laughs> and we all know what happened to Zack Snyder. He became loved by the public. Yeah. But despised by the company Lost that paid job, him. Essentially, yeah. yeah. Um, another thing is Matt Reeves was at like, they're, you know, they're, um, they're doing promotions and like red carpet stuff for it. And they asked, they're like, are you doing another one? And he's like, He's like, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, right now we're talking about like what path to go next. And like, we've got the um, Colin Farrell spinoff, right? Like the Penguin spinoff. Um, so like right now we're focused on that. Uh, but he's like, yeah, we've had we've had a couple talks on, on what we could do next. But right now we're just, you know, we're just soaking this in right now, talking about this and, you know, focusing on Colin's thing. Uh, but they said they were talking about a second one. So their their initial talks of a second one. Well, so, yeah, they also said it wasn't going to be part of DCEU, and then DC yeah. released that clip of the yeah. Batman being part of the future of DCEU and yeah. bringing in the uh, Joker. And, like they're going to continue with it, and they're just waiting to see how successful to determine what they yeah. do. The last thing we want to cover: League of Legends topic. You put this down, so I am not sure where we're going with this, but you put down changing. Master Yi. So probably my my favorite champion to play. I, he's I don't have the highest mastery on him. Very close. I checked it today. It's like one twenty seven thousand on Bard to one hundred nineteen. I was gonna say, Master is it Bard Yi. or Senna? Bard actually. Senna's got like seventy six or no thirty nine. Nautilus has seventy six. I just got S on S's on Senna so fast. But Master Yi, they are changing. Um, they are essentially wanting to pull away from lethality mastery. It's like um, AP. It's kind of anti-fun. They are adding a on-hit component component to his Q. So I think it bounces six times. Uh, but but the first the first hit would be the full charge of a on-hit thing, and then every subsequent hit would be less. Your Muju style and your Highlander, so his E and the R, are now castable while in Alpha Strike. So like you can so you can you want to cast E before you hit Alpha Strike, right? Because you get the on hit for those the full seconds. charge of the E. Right. The, you know how the W extends Highlander while you're in the W? Like it doesn't pull from how long Highlander is active. W no longer pulls from when E is active. So like you can you can W and keep the duration left on your Wuju style. Okay. The, the uh, on hit they want to make him more of an auto attacker again and right not a, he's supposed to be a blade master so that makes yeah. more sense yeah so not the the lethality i'm gonna cue you and then one shot you with dust blade type thing. yeah which I'm, I'm okay with um you know in in competitive games you kind of have to decide what their team comp is if you can go lethality and sure. blow up their back line you can do that but typically, you want to go something like Kraken Slayer, Blade of the Ruin King, Jinsu, something like that, you know? So I'm okay with it. I'm going to be a god regardless on Master Yi, so... Right. It'll be fun to play with you on that, but I think that's smart. I think uh, lethality is so similar to AP, because, like, yeah. AP, all the you did all that damage with Q, and then you got the one auto from Lich Bane, and right now, lethality, Yi... Often Dust goes Blade, Essence Reaver, yeah. Dust Blade, Essence Reaver, Dark Harvest. You get all the damage from the Q, you get the lethality, and then you get the one auto for the burst. Yep. If you don't kill the target on that, often you do, but if you don't, kind of, then you just sit there and W and wait till you can Q again. Yeah. Yep. And that's exactly AP. You used to do the same thing. You just Q. If it didn't get the kill, you sat in W. They couldn't kill you. Q. Yep. And and that's just and you, but usually the Q got the kill. So I think it's very similar to the AP build. So um, if that was considered anti fun, I think lethality would be too. If they're gonna <laughs> continue like revamping 
older champions to attribute more to their like their play style. I would love if they gave some uh eight if they gave Bruiser Nibbly a chance again. Sure. The yeah, one thing I'm worried about is in competitive play. If you're giving Master, you're making Master Yi an auto attacker again. And you put the on hit thing on his Q, like on his Q. How fast is his jungle clear going to be? That's going to be if quick. He can, if he can wooju style and then Q something. Oh, yeah. And yeah. proc all that. That's what I'm worried about. It, like, they might have to make the early levels weak. Yeah. Like make the base value of his Q and E really low up until level six. But then cool. level six, it ramps up to the point where maybe you want to sacrifice a point in W. If you get Master, if Master E gets kills early, you want him to destroy, like he should be able to destroy the mid game because right. he's going to fall off late game because you can just CC him, but but you want him to dominate that mid game. Well, that's all we got. That's everything in our miscellaneous. That's actually everything we have for you for this whole episode. I, I, I said this in our other section. I do apologize if my energy was a little low, not feeling the best, but I will not cancel a week. So we will see you this week. We will see you next week. Feel free to check out our sports section if you like it. Other than that, you all look great today. GG. GG. GG.